This is the final presentation for the Android subteam with members Marie Newman, Amal Shadri, Ferris Durrani, and Kwashika Moen. Each of us will go over what we worked on over the semester individually. My name is Marie Newman, and I'll start off by providing a demo of a Unity application that I worked on this semester. So I created a game where the objective is for the user to launch the red bird here to kill the purple monsters that, you, that the user sees on each level. One major thing that I learned was how to use the Unity framework along with C-sharp programming to make game objects move based on a user's interaction with the game. For example, you can see that if I, the user, click on the bird and drag it backwards the with the mouse and release, the bird goes flying. In that way, I've implemented the game to respond to the user dragging and releasing with the mouse. Another thing that I learned was how to update the game objects based on events that occur in the game or are prompted by the user. For example, notice that if I click the bird and release it and hit the monster, the monster will sparkle and the eyes will shut to demonstrate to the user that they have successfully killed the monsters. You can see that again here. If I, if you see this monster. And lastly, I also learned how to progress through multiple levels in a game by pressing play. I'll start out at level one. So here is level one. So if I pull the bird back and hit the one monster on level one, you will see that it automatically went to level two where you have multiple monsters to kill. So learning how to progress through multiple stages like that can be helpful in the future. For example, if a researcher wants to conduct a series of tests and wants each test to load, consecutively in a similar way as the levels load in the game. In conclusion, learning Unity by building this game helped to expand my skill set in a way that could open the door to more projects for the Android team in a future semester. And secondly, learning Unity can help contribute to building applications that can help conduct research related to concussions for the LaPaca team. And that concludes my, my portion of the final presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Kashika and I'm a new member of the Android sub team for the Brain Trauma Assessment Protocols VIP. This semester, I mainly focused on learning how to develop Android apps through tutorials on the platform Udacity. By the end of these tutorials, some skills I have learned are having a better understanding of user interface, connecting to the internet, optimizing large sets of data, creating multi-screen apps, understanding the Android lifecycle, customizing user experience by giving them options for personalization based on their preferences, creating more efficient applications, and creating background tasks such as notifications and scheduling processes. Throughout these tutorials, I have been building a weather application, and here is the end result of that. From first glance, we can see the different fonts and the structured alignment of the layout of the app. We can also see how the weather information for the current day is enlarged compared to all the other days. We have the weather for the next several days, and you can keep scrolling to see the weather for more dates. However, I limited the number of days you can see the weather for, just like common weather applications do, so you can't keep on scrolling. You can also click on each date for more information on the weather that day, such as the humidity, the air pressure, and the wind. Even without reading all the details, each date has a little weather icon next to it, so you can know what to expect for the day just by a glance. Next up, we have the three small dots on the top right hand corner of the screen, and when you tap on it, it has two options. The first one leads to the map of your current location, and here it is taking you to Google Maps. And the second option takes you to the app settings, where the user can personalize your app by choosing their current location or just any location in general. They can choose the temperature units of their choice, either metric or imperial, and they can choose whether or not to enable weather notifications. And when you go back to the screen, 
to back to the home screen. I'm just going to choose a random date here. This also has the three small dots on the top right hand corner of the screen, along with another icon which represents the sharing content. When you tap on the three dots, unlike the home screen, this only offers an option to go back to the app settings. When you tap on the sharing content, it gives you two methods for sharing the contents of the selected date's weather details, either through messaging or through Bluetooth, as you can see. And finally, if you recall, if you go back to settings, because we have weather notifications enabled, if I scroll down, if I swipe down to the phone's notification bar, I can see a brief forecast for today. And there you go. That's all I have built included in this app thus far this semester. And this semester, I have also spent some time on tutorials for learning how to use Unity. The tutorial I worked on had two parts to it. The first part was just an introduction to the platform and software and just focused mainly on defining and explaining the different components and features the Unity editor had to offer. The second part consisted of step-by-step -step instructions for me to create my first game on Unity, which is what I have here, a small basic space shooter game. And I'm just going to go ahead and play it. It's going to take a second or two to load. Alright. The point is, I'm really bad at this, but the point is, I am controlling this spaceship and I have to shoot and destroy all the end the asteroids without getting hit by them, otherwise I die. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have built in this app so far, since I only have a basic understanding of how to use the platform. But for next semester, I hope to build on my skills and create a more advanced application. My name is Faris, and I am from the Android sub-team of this VTAP VIP group. Today, I will be presenting my contributions to this sub-team. My first contribution for this semester is that I created a web application to gain an in-depth understanding on how to create a video streaming app using, using React and Node.js. And to do that, I used a tutorial that was recommended by a colleague who worked on our web application. Using that tutorial, I was able to create this simple video streaming React application that has a client and server component such and that works by um, producing these three video thumbnails and whenever i click on any one of the video thumbnails a video will run on autoplay with um, subtitles included and that goes for the rest of the videos my next contribution is that i modified the firebase access so this comes from a recommendation in our last semester's portfolio to have a gui or web application of sort that allows dr laplaca to be able to access uh, her research data that was collected by the android app our original idea was to use heroku to create this web application the same way we created our web our main web app but that turned out to be quite problematic as Heroku, the Heroku Git terminal was pushing a lot of problems. So we decided to explore Firebase hosting before ultimately thinking that this implementation is turning out to be overly complex and quite insecure. So we decided to look for alternative solutions and we found that we are able to share access to our Firebase database and from here, you can see that I am logged into my personal uh, Gmail account and not the VTAP VIP uh, Gmail account. And I was able, and I am able to access our research data. And this is how we are planning to share our research data with Dr. Blocker in the future. Next, I took a big part of this semester to learn Unity. So Unity is this is this programming application that allows you to code 2D and 3D games. But we are learning Unity to establish a base to create a virtual reality application for Dr. Leplaka's needs. So 
from a tutorial recommended by, by Murray, I am able to create this simple game that implements a lot of the Unity's uh, implementation designs, including prefabs, basic materials, and C hash scripts to control how this player reacts in this game. And my last contribution is I collaborated with Mark and Sia from Dr. Laplaca's core team to decide on our user feasibility tests and to help them to create those tests. Unfortunately, the user feasibility tests took quite a bit longer than we expected. And so we decided to push that to next semester. Instead, I used this semester to make small modifications and improvements to our current Android app implementation. In this example, I changed our ID, our ID message from a toast message to a permanent label to give the user more time to input that ID number into the Heroku web application. And that is all. Thank you. Hello, my name is Oma Choudhury, and this is a presentation about my first semester here at the Brain Trauma Assessment VIP. Uh, my main goal this semester was to pick a team and do some tutorials. And I first started off in iOS, but I decided to switch to the Android sub team. I decided to switch from iOS to Android within my third week um, of the VIP um, because I realized that I needed a virtual machine in order to run Xcode because I don't have a Mac. And uh, I realized that this isn't my main goal this semester. I wanted to learn more about app development because I'd never created an app before. And I didn't want to focus on having to figure out how to use a virtual machine. So I switched to the Android sub team and my main goal here was to become more proficient with Android app development. And I was able to create some simple apps in Android Studio, which I was really proud of because I spent a lot of time and effort um, learning how to create an app uh, using the tutorials. And uh, I learned a lot and I really hope to um, apply my skills to a project next semester when I come back. So I started off using the Udacity tutorials, but I realized that they were a little bit outdated. Um, so I switched to the Geeks for Geeks tutorials, but I did learn a lot about um, the app development process using Udacity. I learned about SDKs, uh, which is the version that your app will run. So you don't want your um, app to run on a version that's too low because it won't be able to support new features that Android releases. But you also um, want to be able to make sure that your app can run on a lot of different phones in a lot of uh, different versions so that you maximize your user audience. So it's kind of a balance between um, being the most updated and also being the most usable. Uh, the XML file is basically a plain text file that machines can read and humans can read. And it's where you um, edit the different attributes and widgets that your app will have. Um, it's where you add buttons and text fields and images. Um, it's how your app will look. And activities are what the user, user will actually do on your app. So click a button while they're playing a game or input their name in a text field or call somebody using um, a dialer, uh, which is also one of the projects that I was able to create using the Geeks for Geeks tutorials. So that was really cool. On the left, this is a, an image of a, an Android virtual device or an AVD. And this is uh, basically how um, app, develop, app developers are able to uh, demo their app uh, on the device, just like a user would be able to use it um, without having the physical device with them. So this is a Nexus 5S and uh, it was really cool to be able to manip manipulate this phone and have the app run on like a virtual phone um, it works just like a regular phone, but it's on your computer screen. So it was really cool to be able to figure out how to do this. And the Udacity tutorial actually helped me um, figure out how to get, get this up and running and download it on my laptop. This is an image of uh, the basic calculator app I was able to create using the Geeks for Geeks tutorial. Um, and I will demo that now. So basically, this is a very simple calculator. You can input numbers here like 32 and 78, and you can click this addition button here and it will add the two and it will give you the sum. Or you can divide and it'll give you the decimal. Um, or you can subtract and it'll give you the number there too. So this is just a really simple 
uh, functioning calculator that I was able to create, which was really cool because uh, it took quite a bit to figure out how to make this work, but the tutorials were very helpful and I was actually able to get this running. A lot of code went behind that app, but this is just a snippet of it that I wanted to show. Uh, this is the um, XML file and this is the edit text widget, which is basically like a text field. And uh, this created like the first number input box that you see on the app. So um, like it creates the height of the box, the width of the box, um, you know, the padding, like where the box will be located on the screen. And it also gives the users a hint, which is basically what you see before you start typing so that the user knows to put a number there rather than, you know, like a word. So uh, that's what the hint is. And this is basically where the box will be positioned. My overall thoughts this semester, I learned a lot about app development and I was really glad that I was able to improve my skills using the tutorials. Uh, I look forward to the future semesters at VIP and um, I learned a lot this semester about apps and I want to apply my knowledge to future projects. Thank you. In conclusion, major next steps for the Android team might include working with the La Placa team to complete testing for the research and clinical apps, confirming any new tests that the La Placa team wants to add to the current version of the research app, and after doing that, implementing these tests in the Android and web app, and lastly, discussing any future projects using Unity with the La Placa team in order to apply the knowledge that we gained this semester in Unity. Thank you so much for watching and that concludes our final presentation.